okay students so uh, today our topic is uh, digestion and absorption of uh, macromolecules via gastrointestinal tract so i have divided this topic into part one and part two uh, so that you can easily give some time in uh, listening to this lecture and uh, understanding it so moving towards the topic so we are talking about digestion is the first step and then absorption is the second step uh, um, of macromolecules via gastrointestinal tract so whenever you are taking food either those are vegetables fruits uh, bread uh, anything so you are mainly taking either proteins or fats or carbohydrates or a mixture of them so it is a bulk of like uh, macromolecules which uh, a human being is taking and then it is being chewed down and then it is being digested and ultimately it is being absorbed by the intestinal tract and uh, the macromolecules uh, they are being broken down into smaller molecules like individual units like uh, carbohydrate molecules uh, protein molecules like mono acids fat molecules like fatty acids and then they are absorbed through the intestinal tract into the circulatory system where they are being utilized as a source of energy or wherever they are needed inside the body so they are being transported there so you have to understand this that uh, uh, the digestion and absorption starts from the mouth and uh, uh, macromolecules they are in the bulk form in the beginning when you are taking food by mouth and when uh, it is being digested it is being chewed up and it is being converted into smaller molecules then the macromolecules are still there but they are not polymers but they are monomers so moving towards digestion the process of changing food into simple components which the body can absorb so basically like during the process of digestion there are a number of uh, uh, activities going on within within the digestive system uh, which are converting or changing the food into a, a form which is more simple and uh, easy for the intestine to be absorbed and then reaching the circulatory system so basically like uh, breaking down the bigger molecules into smaller molecules which have the same uh, ability to provide energy but they are individual molecules so digestive tract or gastrointestinal tract where digestion and absorption they take place so basically like uh, when you are talking about digestion so there is a there is an area there is a system there is a uh, organization of different parts within the body where the food is being digested and ultimately absorbed so that part is called digestive tract or gastrointestinal tract so that is a part where the digestion and absorption is happening so there are different sections or different segments of the digestive tract so starting from mouth then you have esophagus then stomach then small intestine and then large intestine so these are the like uh, uh, main segments of the digestive system which are involved in the digestion as well as absorption of the food molecules so moving towards the structure of the digestive system or uh, digestive tract or which is also called as uh, GI tract so you can see that uh, um, starting from the mouth so actually the digestion starts from the mouth and then you can see that there are salivary glands which are secreted into the mouth and uh, then you have uh, pharynx is a small portion tube like portion and then you have the esophagus so from the esophagus it is a tube like structure originating from the 
pharynx and then leading up to the small intestine uh, sorry leading to the stomach so you can see that uh, within that region in the upper region you have upper esophageal sphincter and uh, in the lower region you have lower esophageal sphincter so these are actually uh, muscular structures within the esophagus uh, which are helping the food to be taken down within the stomach and then you have stomach and then stomach uh, leads to the small intestine uh, which have different parts like uh, duodenum jejunum and ileum um, and then the small intestine it opens into the ileocecal valve which is opening into the large intestine and then the large intestine it leads up to the rectum and uh, ultimately anus from where the um, excretion of uh, solid material is taking place so this is like basically like you have to understand that uh, the digestive tract it starts from the mouth then you have the pharynx then you have the esophagus the esophagus it opens into the stomach then stomach opens into the small intestine and then the small intestine has three parts like duodenum jejunum and ileum and then the small intestine it opens into the large intestine and then the large intestine ultimately leads to rectum so this is like uh, the structural um, organization of the digestive system other than that you have like liver gallbladder bile duct pancreas so these are like different types of uh, glands or glandular structures which are pouring their secretions into the stomach and helping in the digestion of the food so digestion it starts from the mouth as i uh, like mentioned earlier so ingestion of food chewing mastication and swallowing so ingestion of food means that you are putting the food into your mouth then chewing chewing means like you are uh, chewing the food with the help of your teeth and mastication means that it is being lubricated along with the saliva and then swallowing means that you are taking it to the pharynx and esophagus so then you have uh, bolus so portion of food swallowed at one time so like when you are taking food and you are uh, like uh, ingesting it and putting it uh, through the like uh, pharynx so a small portion you can put it through the pharynx at one time like when you are chewing so you are taking small amounts of the uh, food portions which can be taken down through the esophagus so that portion is called bolus and uh, then you have saliva so saliva is the like uh, secretions uh, which are being secreted by the salivary glands which are present within the mouth and uh, they have uh, components like enzymes uh, and mucus which is being secreted by salivary glands and uh, water obviously water is being present salts are also present within the saliva so the secretions or the uh, like uh, lubrication which is carried out in the mouth so that is composed of uh, uh, water salts enzymes and mucus so what is the function of saliva is to moisten the food like to uh, soften the food and uh, uh, aid in swallowing so that it can be um, uh, swallowed down it can be ingested inside the esophagus and uh, so the saliva also begins the carbohydrate digestion so as i suggested earlier that uh, the carbohydrate digestion or food or the process of digestion starts from the uh, mouth so actually the carbohydrate digestion is uh, taking place or starting from the mouth and that is with the help of the saliva so secretions of uh, digestion so they are composed of like salivary glands 
so you can see that uh, there are certain areas um, in and around the mouth uh, where these glands are present and these glands are secreting um, saliva and certain like mucus secretions uh, within the mouth which are helping in the mastication of the food uh, so that it can be swallowed uh, down right so digestion moving on like uh, from the mouth to the esophagus so the esophagus it connects mouth to the stomach right so it is a tube like structure starting from the mouth up to the stomach and uh, so epiglottis it is a closest airway so uh, within the mouth there are like two uh, um, tubes which are going down uh, one tube is going down to the lungs and the other food canal or food pipe that is going down to the stomach so when you are taking food so there is a lid uh, which is present at the deep side of the mouth uh, near the neck region that is known as epiglottis which like uh, flips in and uh, covers the uh, trachea from where the air goes into the lungs so when that passage is being closed so then the food is going into the uh, esophagus tube into the food canal or food pipe so and the bolus it is a like small portion of the food which has been chewed down that is moved along by peristalsis so there is a process by which the small portions of the food which have been chewed they are going down into the um, stomach by the way of the esophagus so that process is known as peristalsis and we will discuss in the coming slides so lower esophageal sphincter and so there are like muscular structures on the inner side of the esophagus um, that is keeping the food from backing up into the esophagus so like there are two muscular structures one at the start of the esophagus and one one at the bottom of the esophagus so the at the bottom of the esophagus when the food is entering the stomach so at that place uh, the sphincter are present like the muscular structures are present uh, which are like uh, closing down they like contract and as a result of contracting they are like um, squeezing the food into the stomach and also at the same time they are not allowing the food to come back from the stomach into the esophagus tube like sometimes you have a feeling of uh, vomiting or nausea so in that case the esophageal sphincter they are like working in an abnormal way due to which the uh, vomiting or nausea is taking place so in normal cases it is working in a normal way so that uh, the food is going down to the stomach and it is not coming back so now from the esophagus when the food reaches to the stomach so stomach is uh, has a function of collecting and churning right so collecting means like it is collecting the food the food is coming into the stomach and uh, then churning means that uh, there are different sec secretions uh, which are being uh, secreted into the stomach and as a result of those secretions uh, the food is being further masticated and further like uh, uh, broken down into smaller pieces so for example gastric glands they secrete gastric juice which are composed of water enzymes and hydrochloric acid that kills most bacteria and begins protein digestion and mucus to protect like uh, lining so there is mucus present within the stomach so that is present on the inner side of the stomach and uh, that protects the lining of the stomach like uh, as you can see that there are like secretions of enzymes and hydrochloric acid so they can damage the inner wall of the stomach so to protect the inner wall of the stomach there is mucus present so the mucus secretions are present and they are like protecting the inner wall of the stomach and the protein digestion is being uh, carried out within the stomach and uh, also these uh, secretions they are killing most of the bacteria which are present within the food so as a result 
of this process the food is converted into a chyme so chyme is a semi liquid mass of partially digested food so at this stage uh, when the food reaches the stomach and it is within the stomach so that food is in the form of a chyme so that is semi liquid like it is not completely solid it is not completely liquid but half liquid half half solid and um, partially digested food means that uh, all the uh, like nutrients or all the ingredients or the macromolecules uh, they have not been yet obtained from the food yet and it is partially being digested like it is being broken down up to 50 percent and uh, then you have pyloric sphincter which regulates the passage of chyme into small intestine so as we talked about like uh, esophageal sphincter when from the esophagus the food is entering the stomach and now you have pyloric sphincter so that is uh, a muscular structure uh, on the inner side of the stomach uh, at the end of the stomach from where the stomach uh, from where the food enters into the uh, small intestine so at that specific um, region the muscular structure is present and uh, the chyme which is semi liquid mass so and that is being transported or that is being pushed into the small intestine so that passage of chyme is being regulated by this stomach and um, as a result it is uh, being uh, like uh, processed to the small intestine where further digestion and absorption is taking place <clears throat> so secretions are of digestion so if you look at uh, this slide you can see that um, in the middle you have a neutral pH and uh, on the top you have the most basic pH and uh, in the bottom you have the most acidic pH so the yellow highlined uh, components are bile which has a pH of around 8.5 then you have pancreatic juice which is a which has a range of around like a pH of 8 and then you have saliva which is more or less neutral around pH of 6.5 and the gastric juice uh, so which is secreted into the stomach so that is quite acidic and it is in the range of uh, 1.5 or 2 <clears throat> so you can see that uh, there is a range of uh, secretions uh, which are taking place within the stomach or in the mouth and they have different uh, pH ranges and uh, for the comparison there are different like uh, other um, things which have different pH like household ammonia which has a pH of 11 or battery acid which has a pH of 0 which is highly acidic so you can see that um, you have a mixture of uh, uh, somewhat basic neutral and uh, uh, more acidic secretions which are taking place into the digestive system so now moving towards the small intestine like from the uh, stomach when the chyme is entering the small intestine so the small intestine it has three segments uh, the first one is duodenum opening from common bile duct secretes fluid from liver and gallbladder uh, so and uh, in the duodenum so the bile duct it is secreting its secretions into the first part of the small intestine so you have to remember that bile duct is secreting its uh, fluids uh, which are composed of liver and gallbladder right so and uh, the bile emulsifies fat so what is the bile doing it is emulsifying the fat means that uh, it is covering the fat and then pancreas that is being also secreted into the duodenum uh, its secretions and the pancreas secretions are composed of amylase which break down the carbohydrate molecules sodium bicarbonate uh, which are neutralizing the acidic chyme 
as well as the lipase which is acting on the lipid molecules so you can see that uh, at the first portion of the small intestine the duodenum so that is these are the secretions which are coming into the duodenum uh, from the bile duct and the bile duct is taking fluids from liver gallbladder and pancreas so these are the different types of secretions which are further helping in the digestion of food uh, for example like emulsifying fat breaking down the carbohydrates by amylase neutralizing the acid chyme and lipase which is acting on the lipid molecules and uh, then the second portion of the small intestine is jejunum so and the third portion is ileum so within the ileum which is the last portion of the small intestine then you have a ileocecal valve so ileocecal valve is it is a sphincter which means it is a like uh, regular ring like muscular structure inside the small intestine at the ileum um, area of the small intestine which is the last segment of the small intestine ileum so that regulates the passage of chyme into large intestine so every time when uh, you can see that in the previous slides that when you are entering from esophagus into stomach so that then you have a sphincter a muscular structure which is regulating the passage of the food then from the stomach into the small intestine again you have a muscular structure ring like structure which is regulating the passage of the food into the small intestine so then from small intestine when the food remaining like uh, food uh, materials uh, which are of no use at the moment so when they are entering the large intestine so then again there is a ring like uh, muscular structure on the inner side of the small intestine at the end of the small intestine like between the junction of the small and large intestine which is regulating the passage of the chyme into large intestine so this is uh, like about uh, small intestine and what is happening there so you have to remember that uh, basically like uh, uh, pancreas bile duct gallbladder liver so the secretions of liver and gallbladder and pancreas they are coming to the bile duct and then from the bile duct the bile is being secreted into the small intestine and it is helping in the digestion of the food protein carbohydrates and fat molecules so moving towards large intestine so that is a uh, also called colon reabsorbing and eliminating so reabsorbing and eliminating right so this these are the two functions of the large intestine that it is again reabsorbing certain nutrients or water or uh, certain molecules micromolecules as well as eliminating so elimination means that uh, the elimination of the food which is no more required and which is in the form of feces so fermentation of undigested residues by bacteria occurs so you can see that there are like certain types of bacteria which are present in the large intestine which are causing the fermentation of undigested residues of the food and uh, so the end of the large intestine is at rectum where water and some minerals are absorbed so that is like reabsorption and uh, then you have anus sphincter that controls defecation excretion of fiber residue wastes and some water so these are the portions of the large intestine and then leading towards the uh, passage of stool so that was uh, all about uh, like the first part in the digestion and uh, absorption of macromolecules through the uh, small intestine and uh, uh, if you have any questions or if you have any queries so then you can ask me on whatsapp or uh, on the kcms uh, platform um, as well as like uh, uh, i can send you the powerpoint uh, presentation of the same lecture so that you can uh, download it read it 
and uh, like whenever you want to like look at it in a more clear form you can zoom in and see the diagrams clearly and so that you can understand so yeah, give me your feedback about this uh, and uh, I will upload the next uh, part of this lecture soon so looking forward to your feedback thank you